Hey, um, my name is Mark DiGiamarino, and I will be hosting this webinar today um, for Gartner Digital Markets to explain how to collect reviews across our three sites. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join. I know that we all have limited bandwidth, so I will try to make this as swift and informative as possible. So, what we will cover today, uh, what is Gartner Digital Markets uh, and how it will positively impact your review distribution, some best practices to follow when recruiting reviews, three simple strategies you can leverage to kickstart your review recruitment, and at the end of the webinar, we'll be giving you an exclusive offer and overview of our new service, the Reviews Acquisition Service, which is something you do not want to miss out on. Um, it's going to really help when it comes to getting new reviews to your Gartner Digital Markets profiles. So. Um, one thing before we get started on Gartner Digital Markets is please know that I would love to answer any questions you have. I know there's going to be a lot of information um, thrown at you today, so please do come in um, the chat feature of uh, GoToWebinar and submit your questions. My colleague Caroline will be compiling a list and I will address those towards the end. Uh, if you are going to be at Dreamforce this year, please do come and visit us at booth 1813 in the Cloud Expo or contact us at digitalmarkets at gartner.com. So, what is Gartner Digital Markets? It is your one-stop shop for B2B software customer acquisition. Gartner Digital Markets, uh, we offer a unique opportunity for software vendors to acquire high volume, high quality web traffic and sales leads from the world's leading online destinations for business software buyers. Each of our sites provides a different web experience to serve the wide variety of software buyer profiles, each of whom have a varying online purchasing research behavior. The centralized place to expose your brand to millions of software buyers, Gartner Digital Markets, is made up of three distinct sites, Capterra, GetApp, and Software Dice. Across the three sites, Gartner Digital Markets receives over 3.5 million monthly visitors, has more than 150,000 software ratings and reviews, and has over 28,000 software vendors listed. Now, when it comes to reviews, I'm sure you're curious why they matter. Well. Long story short, they have become the new standard. If you're here, you've mostly, most likely already realized this, but for those of you who are still on the fence, know this. In the age of TripAdvisor, Yelp, and Amazon, buyers have become accustomed to looking at reviews before they purchase anything from a bar of soap to a new car. And the software industry hasn't escaped this trend of reviews influencing purchasing decisions. In a couple of studies we performed, we found that two-thirds or more of software buyers said reading reviews significantly impacts their purchasing decisions. And those buyers aren't just looking for one or two reviews, they want to see multiple reviews before they trust what your current users are saying. 64% of buyers actually said that they want to look at at least six reviews before purchasing a piece of software. Also, for those of you who already advertise across the Gartner Digital Market sites, know this. Vendors who advertise on our sites see 22% more traffic and 79% more leads when they have reviews. If you already have the six reviews I referenced earlier, I can't stress how important it is to continually push for a steady stream of updated user reviews. This is because less than 1% of software buyers said they would consider reviews written more than one year ago, and 71% would only consider reviews written within the last six months. As I'm sure you've experienced from your conversations with prospective new clients, this is because today's buyer is pretty savvy. They understand how quickly software updates can impact their experience and want to get the most up-to-date feedback from their peers. Because of this, your review recruitment strat strategy needs to change. No longer can you do one large campaign to get reviews and then abandon review recruitment. Now you need to push for a steady stream of new reviews. Additionally, reviews will help you on the Capterra site as well as Software Advice and GetApp as you can filter by the reviews on each directory or category. Although if your product has zero reviews, you will not appear when the filtered results are presented to the site visitor. So, reviews on Gartner Digital Markets. Quantity, quality, recency, they all matter, but how do you go about getting them? Well, before I dive into the best practices and strategies you can leverage, I'd like to make a big announcement that will positively impact your review count. By the end of Q4 2016, all of your user reviews, both past and the future ones you recruit, will be shared across Gartner Digital Markets, which is made up of Capterra, GetApp, and Software Advice, as I previously mentioned. So this means that as you reviews, as you recruit reviews to your profile, it will impact your standing in reports published for each site. So whether it's Capterra's top 20 reports, 
GetApp's category leaders or software advice's new front runners quadrant, your review data will allow your software to be considered for these reports and represented in the most accurate light. Speaking of the front runners quadrant, please do keep an eye out for an email about this new report in the coming weeks. Powered by Gartner methodology and hosted on software advice, the new front runners quadrant provides a data-driven assessment of products in a particular software category to determine which ones offer the best capability and value for small businesses. If you have any questions about having your profiles across Gartner Digital Markets, again, contact digitalmarkets at gartner.com. Review recruitment strategies. So now that you understand why reviews matter, how will they benefit you? And can you trust the reviews that on our site are high quality? Well, before you begin, make sure that you follow the best practices so you can make, get the best out of email, social media, and account management integration. First and foremost, don't ask for a favor every time you try to recruit a review. Whether you're recruiting reviews through email, phone calls, in person, through uh, account management, interaction, social media, Try to avoid asking a favor from a client every time you ask them to leave a review. Instead, let them know that filling out a review is a chance to input the impact, the future of your product, voice their opinion, and help you understand how to better meet their needs. If they do not understand how leaving a review benefits them, they are less likely to do it. For example, if you just give them a task by saying something like, quote, we would appreciate your taking the time to leave a review about us on our Capterra profile, it's gonna fall to the bottom of their to-do list because there isn't an obvious benefit for them. But if you let them know this is a unique chance to share their experience and impact the future of your product, they will become more excited, I promise, and more willing to go to your profile and leave a review. Secondly, a best practice I like to tell all the vendors I talk to about review recruitment is don't fear negative reviews. Vendors regularly limit the scope of their review recruitment initiatives to reduce the chance of incurring that negative review that everyone fears. But by doing this, vendors are also going to miss out on the benefits of channels that reach out to tons of customers and users like social media, blog posts, and other numerous channels that really do hit across large audiences. Sure, by leveraging these new channels, you may increase the chance of a negative review, but you're also going to see more positive reviews published across those channels as well. And that one negative review that haunts your dreams is not so bad. Um, in studies I referenced earlier, we found 52% of software buyers trust a software product more if it has a few negative reviews. This is because software buyers and shoppers in general have become savvy enough to understand that a few poor reviews do not mean a product or service is not worth their time or money. Just picture yourself on Amazon or Yelp reading reviews of a product or restaurant. Speaking for myself, when I see nothing but five-star reviews, a red flag actually pops up for me. So don't be afraid of the boogeyman in your reviews closet that is that one unhappy customer. Instead, trust the quality of your product. Know that we are, help you, help, we are here to help you quickly respond to any negative reviews that come your way and leverage channels that really do allow you to engage with broad audiences. Now, as I mentioned, um, interacting with your customers is really important, whether that's on social or via email. You can actually use our platform to start that conversation and leverage the Captera vendor portal to respond to those reviews. In your vendor portal, if you are, uh, have a profile on Captera, you'll be able to log in and click through the Reviews tab on the top of the dashboard. Next, you can click down into the details of one of the reviews, which is listed at the bottom of that page. You'll notice the Viewed and Not Viewed hyperlink. If you just click into that, you'll be able to see the details of each particular review. Note that Viewed or Not Viewed is just referring whether or not you have actually looked at the details of a particular review. The goal here um, being they're supposed to help your team keep track of which reviews you still need to look over and potentially respond to. Once you are into the details of the review, you'll notice here that there's going to be some information about that person who left the review, um, as well as some information about the review that they left. To respond, you simply fill out this widget here, which is going to be on the top right of that page, and you can actually send a response directly to the reviewer by checking that Send My Response to the Reviewer button. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, once the review does go live, that response will be um, posted directly below the review. So, review recruitment strategies. Now that we have the best practices down of not limiting your scope and making sure that your messaging is correct, Let's move on to some self-service strategies you can leverage to recruit reviews. So these strategies I'm going to discuss are only a sample of the numerous different ways you can engage with your user base to recruit reviews. The best piece of advice I can give you is this. 
leverage what you already have the framework built out for, please. If you don't have a social account, please don't build one just to recruit reviews. If you don't have a blog, please don't create one just to recruit reviews. Um, your users will notice when something isn't organic or if it's out of sync with your other marketing efforts. So please make sure that those match with what you've pre previously done. Um, also, before you start uh, really tackling review recruitment or you know, relaunching that initiative if you've already tried it before, uh, don't get discouraged. If the first thing you tried doesn't work, just try it again or try something else. Um, an example that I like to reference, uh, Noah Kagan of OK Dork uses an example of email. Uh, he says when he really wants to get a message across to his followers, he'll send an email out and then wait two weeks and to those people that did not open the email, he will change the subject line, keep the body copy the same, and send that email out again. Um, and he sees 11% more total opens um, which is for his sample size, 7,000 more people to see his email. Of course, that changes based on the list that you're sending out to, but don't get discouraged. It is a process, um, and Jason, Will Banks, and myself, the reviews program managers here uh, for Gartner Digital Markets, are here to help you as best we can. The first and most simplistic way to get some reviews to your profile is via email. Um, this is especially helpful at building up your review count as it allows you to focus on brand advocates, Uber users, whatever you want to call them, while also targeting a more broad range of your users. Um, remember, this is a big piece, do not feel you have to limit yourself to one review per company where you have users. If you have multiple users at the same company, um, each user is actually allowed to leave a review. So when it comes to running these campaigns, make sure you choose when to ask. Um, you can run this when it's 30 days after a client is onboarded, um, perhaps you know, five hours after they have an interaction with your customer support team. Just make sure that you have a standard um, best practice when it comes to that. It really does help your team um, make this a standard recurring event and something that's a little bit harder to forget or skip over in the future. Be sure not to exhaust your users though. Um, don't conduct numerous campaigns at once. If you want to do a direct one-to-one -one email campaign, that's great. Um, but also make sure if you're conducting a drip campaign, for example, um, don't have those go out to that person on the same day. Uh, it's very easy to overwhelm your users, uh, clog up their inbox, and um, just make the uh, idea of leaving a review more of a nuisance than an opportunity, which it really is for them. Um, another great strategy here um, is using your newsletter. I'll show an example of that later, uh, but just dedicating a portion of that newsletter if you have one that goes out on a regularly recurring basis, whether that is monthly, quarterly, weekly, um, really do dedicate some time here in different ways, getting the point across to your users that you want to hear from them, that you really want to advance your product, that you want to make the offering um, better suited to what they're using it for. And by putting it in your newsletter, not only is it a um, great piece of content for you guys, but it's really valuable for your users, and they're going to be excited about that. And I think that the example I show later um, is going to be a really good uh, example of how to make it more of an emotional ask as well, really connecting with your user base. Lastly, uh, an easy passive way to get some reviews is adding a call to action, CTA, to your email signature. Um, you can actually link directly to the review submission form using the unique URL provided to that page in your email signature. Uh, this allows you to have your users skip over the home page that you have on that profile and go directly to filling out the review submission form, which does improve the completion rate. By having this in your emails, um, you know, for your account management team, which I'll get into a little bit later, um, and for anyone else at your company who does interact with clients regularly, uh, it just does increase the chances that they're going to stumble upon that and take some time, especially if they have a great interaction with your team, uh, to leave their thoughts and, and feelings about how things are going so far for them. So now I want to get into a few examples. Uh, first, this is an example of an email from Inflow. Uh, as you can notice here, uh, as you read through, it's really friendly messaging. You know, it really does interact with that user in a fun way, a little bit out of the ordinary. Um, I'll get into this when I talk about social, but please don't feel like you have to get caught with robotic messaging when it comes to reviews. Uh, it's really an opportunity for you to have a fun interaction with your user base if that fits your brand voice. If it doesn't, totally understand. Um, another way that this email does a great job is it has that image in the middle, um, catches the user's eye, uh, also offers the incentive for them to leave that review. It doesn't necessarily have to be anything big. It could be uh, 
access to a piece of content that you haven't released across to the uh, entire user base that you have, perhaps an early offer to join a beta test, um, or if you would like to, incentivizing for um, a review via a gift card of some court, some kind or, or something like that is also uh, totally acceptable. Uh, one caveat to that being, please, when you are incentivizing, make sure you're letting your users know you're incentivizing an honest review, not a review of a certain star count. Uh, also, another great tactic leveraged in this email is urgency. Um, your users, when they see something like this, even if there is an incentive, uh, will probably say, okay, yeah, I'll get to that later. But by putting a deadline to enter and also quantitating it by saying that, okay, we are only going to let the first 25 reviewers get this incentive, you're going to drive some interaction. You're going to make those users understand this is a really simplistic ask. It's going to help the company. You know, it's really going to help me down the road by improving their product. And I'm also going to get that incentive. So for this inflow campaign, they actually had some wonderful results. Um, by rewarding their users for helping them out even beyond the incentive as it was only the first 25 reviewers, they ended up getting 300 reviews in just one week. Um, so as long as you have you know, the messaging on point based on your customers' um, previous experience with your brand, making sure that you are emailing them at the right time, um, considering seasonality, time of the week, you know, emailing on a Friday isn't always the best idea, um, you can really see a huge bump very quickly uh, of reviews to your profile page. Next, this is another email uh, example from uh, groovehq.com. Um, is another way that you can leverage timing when it comes to getting a review. So I mentioned earlier, you want to make that a uh, basic tactic of yours, whether it's a week after they're onboarded, um, you know, a day after I had to have a customer service experience, uh, have a campaign, campaign ready to go um, to interact with them based on whatever um, action point you want to uh, have that spark on. So here you can see that this is for a more excitable, conversational, conversational um, type of an outreach. Here you have the ask, it's a strong call to action. You give them the link in that um, email. And it also you know, has that smiley face there. Um, this is just the example. If that's not a fit for your voice, that's totally understandable. But again, this can be an opportunity for you guys to step outside of what you usually do when it comes to your outreach and interact with your users on a uh, more conversational level. And lastly, this is the newsletter example I talked about earlier from grade.us. Grade us. So as you can see, this is a really um, personalized outreach. Even though it's in a newsletter that they sent out, um, you can already tell that this is coming from someone who is appealing to the emotional side of um, the user's experience, uh, saying that they choke up when they read these types of things, um, that they are really important to them, that they really do look through them. Uh, if you get that messaging across to your users that this isn't just something where you're trying to aggregate reviews just to do it. You're really trying to look into what they are thinking of the product, um, what improvements you can make. They will hear that and they will act on it. So, you know, also by saying that they didn't get to watch March Madness, but they want to um, get involved in Captera's Reviews Madness, which will happen again um, next year. It really is a wonderful call to action. And uh, by the end of this campaign, um, they had sent it out to 223 customers, saw a 67% open rate, a 35% click-through rate, and in just five days of the campaign, uh, received 13 new reviews. And that is just through a generic newsletter. So again, these are different channels you can leverage, whether it's that one-to-one, -one, whether it's a drip campaign, or whether it's a newsletter. Each one of these gives you a different opportunity to interact with your customer base and uh, explain to them why you need these reviews. Uh, don't just ask them for it. As I said before, don't say that you need them to do you a favor. Uh, make sure you, that they understand that it's going to benefit both them and you. So moving on, social media. Um, this is one of the biggest um, pain points that I feel a lot of vendors have when they come to review recruitment is they're afraid of social media. They don't know how to leverage it. Um, even though it does reach out to a broad base of users, they're not sure where to start. Um, so with social media, um, it does allow you to cut through clutter if you do it correctly and reach a lot of industry uh, professionals that you're focusing on when it comes to leaving a review. So it allows you to reach that large audience, you don't have to do that one-to-one -one outreach, um, and when you do it, you can leverage Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, 
and um, you know other channels that are out there. You don't have to be tied down to those ones exactly. Uh, on social, these users are being fed new content regularly, and you need to make sure that your post sticks out with that compelling call to action I referenced earlier. Uh, as it says here, this can be done by directly adding, quote unquote, a company uh, or tagging them in your post. Uh, you can also include engaging images and infographics in those posts. I will say that on social, um, people like flashy things. Uh, if you have a great image up there, a good infographic, they're going to notice and they're going to click at a higher rate than if it was just text-based. Um, also, don't be afraid to leverage groups that you guys already have created. So if you have a LinkedIn group or a Google Plus group or a group on another channel that isn't even li listed out here on this slide, uh, use it. You know, as I said, leverage the framework that you already have. Our goal isn't to give you guys more work out there when it comes to review recruitment. We want you to leverage what you already have. So by taking advantage of the LinkedIn group you took the time to cultivate over the years or the Google Plus group that you regularly interact with, um, it's going to allow that review recruitment process to start quickly and get some uh, new reviews coming through fast. So when it comes to those messages, though, even if you're messaging that LinkedIn group or Google Plus group, don't go with robotic generic messaging. Um, this does change across the different channels. What you say on Twitter is going to change based on what you say on Facebook versus what you say on LinkedIn. Um, but people are going to be fed content at a regularly um, you know, increasing pace on social media. It's always a, a race to who can get the most content out. Um, as possible. So be sure to be playful, to use those images to cut through that clutter and um, you know really take advantage of this growing medium. With Twitter, uh, you want to keep your content short. Have a strong CTA and make sure you're really um, getting across to your users and followers what you want them to say. Um, Sorry to break the news, but not all of your users will follow you on Twitter, so be sure to use industry-relevant hashtags. As you can see here in the tweet from Wink Reports, they hashtagged business intelligence, which helped them reach over one million um, Twitter users through that hashtag. So that would be something that they would have missed out on if they had just sent that tweet out to their regular followers. Um, so in addition to that, another great tactic as displayed here by Influitive is directly, quote unquote, adding your users who leave a review on the Captera profile. Um, the only thing that I would add to a tweet like this, I think it's wonderful, it does create that interaction that your users want to see from the brand, is don't be afraid to link to your profile. Um, so your profile gets those views of people who want to see the reviews that you know, D. Wilfred just left. Um, it does increase uh, the amount of views that you will get there. Um, nonetheless, this is a wonderful tactic. It shows your followers um, and those users who leave the review how much you value their opinion, and it could separate you from the pack if a prospective new user comes across that tweet. You know, moving forward, they could say, wow, I might want to take a closer look at Influitive because these guys really do interact with their users. It's not a big brand that has a wall up in between them. It's a really easy way to separate yourself from everybody else out there. And next is Facebook. Facebook is a wonderful channel. Um, I think personally it's underutilized when it comes to review recruitment just because people feel that people don't go to Facebook pages uh, to leave a review, but I think you'd be pleasantly surprised if you have the right messaging on your page uh, when it comes to the type of reviews that you could see come through. Uh, to really get this going, I would recommend tagging or adding again companies um, or specific users if you want to uh, do that, that you think should leave a review um, that you know have leveraged your product in the past. Um, you can lengthen the message, but don't go overboard. Uh, again, even though it's Facebook, it allows you more characters and Twitter. You don't want to go too far overboard. At a certain point, it actually will cut off your message until you, people have to click that continue button to read further uh, about what that post says. So that does decrease um, the interaction rate that people have with posts. So try to keep it short and sweet. Um, using images, again, really will catch the eyes of your Facebook users, especially if it's something you don't regularly do. Um, it really does draw their eyes to that post, make them a little bit more um, you know, open to reading what you want to say here and uh, just getting involved with your call to action. 
Lastly, as you can see in this rock, our MS image that we uh, had pulled, um, this is a great example, has a good image, has the um, call to action about posting the review on Captera, actually shows them um, a benefit for them doing so. Uh, it appeals to um, their de the user's desire to help others. So, you know, immediately saying, hey, do you want to help others find rock two? Um, that's short and sweet, and it really does hit home on the what is the value for the reviewer to leave that review. Um, in addition, they're also very open about how it will help the rank ranking that they have um, on Captera. Just um, if you didn't know, the basic free profiles on our site are listed by number of reviews. Uh, the only edit I would make to this post is leveraging a URL shortener. Um, this is a good best practice across all social channels. Uh, it may seem trivial, but uh, people do get scared away from your URLs that are long and, and full of symbols. So I highly recommend avoiding that if possible. Um, but overall, I think that Facebook would be a great place for people to start their outreach. And the final social channel I'll talk about right now is LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is very professional. So I had mentioned earlier about the playful tone you can have on Twitter or Facebook. On LinkedIn, you want to maintain that professional tone, but don't think that people don't want to have fun. Um, you know, you can make it a little bit different um, by including an image, um, like you can see in the uh, post here on the bottom left, that is going to catch someone's eye on LinkedIn more so than a pure text post. Um, but if that's not a fit for what you usually post on LinkedIn, don't do it. As I said earlier, only do things that match with your uh, brand voice and what you usually do when you're interacting with your users on LinkedIn. For the posts, make sure that they are informative. This is a professional audience that does have a higher attention span than Facebook and Twitter users sometimes. Uh, please feel free to cite some statistics about you know why reviews do matter and how it's going to help that you guys um, you know get your software out there to more prospective users, especially if the user has had a good interaction with you in the past and has enjoyed their um, time leveraging your software. Um, but do not make it too wordy. Uh, again, similar to the uh, Facebook um, continue button, LinkedIn will also throw that in there if you go over a certain character count. So you want to make sure it's to the point. Uh, do not go too long or else the call to action is going to get lost um, and you're going to lose some people who would have been really interested in leaving that review. Also, be sure to include the right link. Uh, as I had referenced earlier, you will have a unique URL to your review submission form. So skipping over your homepage and going right to that submission form is going to get your users more um, likely to leave that review. So including that strong call to action could be lost. Um, you know, the benefits of that could be lost if you only include a link to your homepage uh, just because they're going to click there to go leave the review and then they have to go click another link to actually write that review. So it's a really small step, but I will say that based on my experience uh, helping vendors when it comes to review recruitment, it is very beneficial and it will help you out when it comes to getting those reviews onto the page. So moving away from social to another tactic that I think is very beneficial for vendors is leveraging your account management or client success team, your customer service representative, however you call them. Um, if they spend most of their day proactively interacting with customers via phone, email, or in person, uh, consider enlisting your front of line staff members to recruit reviews for you. Uh, it's a really simple way since they're already going to be interacting with those users and clients on a regular basis to make reviews part of that regular script, whether, again, if it's uh, after a month of onboarding, two months, uh, you know, 100 days out, whatever it is, uh, make it a regularly occurring task. So make sure it's part of their daily workflow. Uh, additionally, make sure that um, once a user has been brought on board, they understand uh, the benefit of reviews for the general public as well as for you and to them when they get on board. So this really does go back to the earlier point I had made about not asking for a favor, but if when you have a new client come on board, your account management team takes the time to outline, here's why this is going to benefit you, here's why this is going to benefit us, and um, you know, here's how you can make this happen, they're going to be more apt to do it, even if they don't do it in that moment when they're first brought on board, whether that's within you know, a couple days, a week, whatever it may be. Um, if you give them that education on the upfront about the importance of reviews, um, they're going to be more likely to follow through on an ask that you make of them, whether it's you know, 90 days down the road or, or what have you, whatever fits best for your team. So you know, really do make sure that you ask users regularly and educate them on the upfront. 
And lastly, make sure that you reward your team for recruiting reviews. Unless your team knows you are serious about reviews, they won't really take them seriously. Uh, you can make it a fun contest each month or quarter, reward your team members for reviews recruited, uh, let them know that uh, one user um, who leaves a review and kind of pivoting away from making it a contest for your team, but making it a contest for the users themselves, one reviewer <clears throat> will have uh, the opportunity to win a certain incentive by having their name pulled out of a hat. Um, and that, you know, if that person wins, then the account manager who got that review wins. Uh, it really, you know, can be taken in many different directions. Um, but leveraging that team, especially if you already have it built out, uh, is an easy win for you when it comes to review recruitment. Lastly, I want to uh, direct your attention to our review recruitment badges. So uh, these go hand in hand with the email signature CTAs I had mentioned earlier. Um, this write a review on Captera call to action button here can be hosted in your email signatures and is a really easy way for you to get people to go to that uh, unique URL for the submission form and leave a review. Uh, for the badge that we have for you here, the Captera user reviews badge on the left, um, this is a wonderful free badge to leverage on your site. Um, as it says here on the slide, 63% of consumers are more likely to purchase from a site that has product ratings and reviews. So by showing this on your About Us page, testimonials page, um, what have you, it's only going to benefit you because it's going to show prospective new users that your current users are leaving their thoughts and feelings about the product in a centralized location. Um, and that you are responding to them. As we had talked over earlier, leveraging the vendor portal response tool is going to create more of a forum that your prospective new clients will see and then, you know, really be like, oh, okay, cool. These guys really do care about their customers. They're really interacting with them. Um, I'll take a look at them a little bit closer than I would have if I went to the page and either A, it was a bunch of old stale reviews or B, um, and even worse, there were no reviews. Um, so the badge that I just referenced that you can include on your site wherever you would like to is available after you have one or more reviews. So if you have zero right now, you can leverage that write a review on Captera call to action button. Um, and when you get that first review, you'll be able to have access to the uh, user review badge in the vendor portal. Um, to get that badge, it's very simple. You just go to the reviews tab. Uh, on the reviews tab, there's going to be a subheading called reviews badge. And then you're going to click that get code button listed there in the bottom right. Uh, and that is embeddable anywhere you would like to. Um, and again, that will go directly to your review submission page uh, so those uh, users can leave a review. And here further on the email signature um, topic, this is just an example, a couple examples of ways that you can leverage that button. Um, you can format this however you want to, uh, whether you want to have that top line above the button saying, you know, hey, shout it from the rooftop so that fits your brand voice. Um, or if you just want to make it stand out on its own, which we think it does, uh, just put that button below your uh, regular signature there for um, whatever you want to do. Uh, again, this is something that I would also recommend leveraging with anyone on your customer support team. Um, who handles help desk tickets. Um, putting this button in when people have had an issue resolved is very beneficial and very um, productive when it comes to review recruitment because that person will already have had a warm handoff, so to speak. <clears throat> Your team will have addressed whatever problem they had when they get that confirmation email that the ticket has been closed, you know, including this button on that ticket, even if it's just a loan or if it's below that signature, whoever is closing out that ticket, uh, they are way more likely to go ahead and leave that review. Um, in that case, I would recommend putting one sentence above that to kind of uh, help better explain uh, what this is all about. But still, something that's really easy, uh, takes about one you know, minute, two minutes tops to edit your signatures for your emails, and then you just let it do its work. Um, and we're very confident that we'll get some new reviews to your page. Do know that we are going to be creating and rolling out new call to action buttons as we move forward in Q4. Uh, so please do keep your eye out on that. We are planning to roll those up into the vendor portal, but for now, um, just contact our team uh, if you would like to get your hands on the uh, call to action buttons. Now, for the new service I referenced at the very beginning, which I think is going to be beneficial to everybody out there, is the Reviews Acquisition Service. So what is it? It is a new completely free, let me say it again, it's totally free service just for our vendors. Uh, so this is a very simple, easy win for you if everything I talk through sounds great and you definitely want to get reviews, but you just don't have the bandwidth. 
Um, Jason, uh, my reviews program manager colleague and I have been talking to vendors since August about review recruitment um, and our team met up. We all agreed that you know the biggest pushback we got from vendors was that people just don't have the bandwidth. So we created this program just to help you guys. Uh, we want to make sure that your life is as easy as possible and you're given every opportunity to recruit reviews. So this service is pretty simplistic to sign up for. All you do is go to our landing page, which we can provide to you via your account manager or our reviews team or anything like that. You upload a list of your customers. Our team um, will create and send the email asking for a review to your Captera profile. Uh, we will send out one intro email and two follow-up emails, so it's three touches, and then um, after that, uh, we will wait to hear from you about whether or not you want to launch another campaign down the road. And you'll get more reviews across the Gartner Digital Markets Network. Uh, referencing back what I had talked about earlier in Q4 about the sites merging all of the reviews across Software Advice, GetApp, and Captera. The reviews that you get from this program, um, once these sites are linked up in Q4, uh, they're going to spread across all three domains. So you're going to get triple the visibility. No longer do you have to ask your user, hey, could you go to Software Advice and leave a review? Hey, could you go to Captera and leave a review? Hey, could you go to GetApp and leave a review? You just get it done once and um, that user will never have to visit any of our sites again to leave a review unless they want to update something that they previously said. Um, so for a limited time to reward vendors that dip their toe in the water with us during our early launch of this service, it really did go live within the last couple weeks, we're offering a $20 gift card to the first 25 reviewers from this specific campaign. Uh, again, this is totally free. It will come at no cost to you. Uh, we would foot the bill and it would just be an incentive to get those reviewers to take action, as I had mentioned earlier in the email section, um, including an incentive of some kind, really does push users to take that first step and leave the review. So um, we wanted to make sure that in the beginning at least we were able to help vendors when it, with uh, that process and again, we would cover the cost of those uh, gift cards. And here I just wanted to show you an example of what that outreach might look like. This is going to be coming directly from us. So this is what it would look like with that call to action in the middle to write a review. Um, this would link over to that submission page, which I have talked about already, um, and would be coming from our team. So your uh, users would just click that button, go through, leave the review, and after the review is posted to the profile approximately one week later, they can expect to receive that gift card. So it's a really easy, uh, quick win there that just don't have the bandwidth to implement any of the self-service strategies I had walked through previously. Um, and again, as I mentioned, our team is willing and ready to answer any questions you might have about it, um, walk you through the program in a little bit more detail, um, and also help you figure out exactly you know, the types of customers that you should reach out to uh, when it comes to leveraging this program. And that is it. So time for questions. Um, just going to see here. So it looks like we have some excellent ones. First and foremost, um, what are some other ways besides the ones you have discussed that we can get some more reviews from our customers? Great question. Um, an easy, quick way to get some reviews beyond what I talked about here um, is leveraging blog posts. Uh, if you do have an active blog, um, just calling out the importance that you place on peer reviews when it comes to the future of your product, uh, and also just talking about how this is going to help improve their user experience, you know, really help the users when it comes to how they interact with the product, um, that will really help, um, you know, drive some interaction there to that page. So uh, if you don't have a blog post, as I mentioned, please don't make a blog, just to recruit reviews. Um, that's not going to work out too well. Let's see, so another person asked, how does rank position, is that determined on the Captera category page? So as I mentioned, um, for basic profiles on our site, they're listed by number of reviews, and um, that's just based on the quantity. For the top of the page, you might see the vendors that are taking advantage of our pay-per-click program, um, and we'd be happy to introduce you to our business development team to talk more about that. Um, but for the basic profiles, it's just based on number of reviews. Do I have to respond to a review in order for it to go live? No, you do not. Um, to have a review go live, you just need to, um, or you don't need to do anything. They need to click 
the link that our system sends when they submit the review. So reviews go in three different stages on our site. It's pending, confirmed, and displaying. When a review is pending, it means that the person has submitted the review but has not clicked the link that our system will automatically send to them. Uh, when they have submitted it, once they click that link, the review will become confirmed in our system. And once the review is confirmed, you'll be notified or the main point of contact on your account will be notified. And uh, you'll have 72 hours to go into it, reply to it, uh, take a look at it, see if there's anything that needs changing. Um, and after that 72 hours, it will display. But if you don't want to reply, you don't have to. I will say I think it's a best practice that everyone out there should leverage um, and really take uh, an opportunity to have some more interactions with their users. It's a pretty easy way to um, get um, interactions with your uh, customer base more public. How long after they become a customer should I ask them to leave a review? Uh, so this is more of a call for your team. Um, it really does depend. I will say once you decide on something to really keep it um, consistent. You know, don't don't go around changing it. You can test it in the beginning um, to you know really get that um, best response rate for people, but. Um, just make sure it's something that's going to be happening, whether you decide it's a week or a month or a quarter um, after they go live. Really just take your time and make sure your team uh, continues to follow up with them. If they don't respond at first, um, as I said earlier, people sometimes miss that first email or don't understand exactly what you want to talk about when it comes to reviews. So be persistent. Um, you know, Don't be uh, overwhelming their inbox, but definitely take your time and uh, go after them whenever it works best for you. Uh, this is a great one. Any suggestion for a customer base that's very small and how to get them engaged to do a review? For example, if we have 20 contacts, we're lucky to just get one person to leave a review. We just don't have the volume right now to get higher response rates. So this is something that I have come across. Um, I'm sure Jason uh, can echo the sentiment is that a lot of you guys out there don't have um, you know, big lists to share when it comes to this program and you think that that might make it not a fit for you um, and I would beg to differ. The reviews acquisition service um, you know, obviously with a higher sample size, you're going to see more reviews come through. Uh, but we have launched campaigns with 25, 50, 75, 100 users. Um, and um, I will report back on how those perform, but we're expecting pretty good response rates. Um, right now, with the way our emails are performing, we're seeing an open rate of over 35%, a click-through rate around 8%, and a review completion rate um, or between five or eight percent. That number has been shifting based on the campaigns we've sent out. But um, I think it's because our team, uh, you know, we're partnering with our parent company, Gartner, on this initiative. So we have some email experts out there who are very good at writing um, solid subject lines to get opens and really, you know, simplistic, well-formatted emails to get their attention with that big call to action. I'll just jump back to the slide here. As you can see, um, it's got everything we talked about earlier. Um, about why someone should leave a review, where that incentive is, what the call to action is. So even if you have that that small um, user base, I don't think you should avoid leveraging the service, especially because it's free. Um, you know, there really is no downfall here when it comes to getting that outreach done. Um, and if you're going to do your own outreach, um, I know Jason or I would be happy to hop on a call with you if you do have your own account or client success team uh, member who is managing your account. Also, don't be afraid to reach out to them. Um, you know, really do take the time to talk through the type of messaging you're using already because it could be a subject line issue, it could be um, lack of a strong call to action, um, etc. So that's one of the big issues I'm happy that someone asked about. Uh, let's see, on the campaigns you launch, would you dynamically remove email addresses of people that have submitted a review from future campaigns? Um, yeah, so we haven't done that yet, obviously, since uh, this is a new initiative and we've been asking vendors to trim the list based on people they know they've already uh, pinged about reviews recently. But moving forward, um, I'll have to sync up with our team about that, but it should be possible for us just to do a quick compare um, of the list that you're providing versus those who have left a review on our sites um, and scrub that list accordingly. So um, again, that's something that we're going to have to look into since we haven't uh, encountered that just yet. but um, I think that it's going to be something that we will be able to help you out with. Where is the landing page we need to go to to submit our email list? Wonderful question. Um, after this presentation, um, you will actually get an email from our team just for attending. 
um, and that's going to have a further overview about the review acquisition service as well as a link to the landing page. So it's a very um, simplistic page. Um, I actually can show you here. Uh, when you open it up, it'll just ask for your name, email, and company, um, whether or not you would like to opt in to the incentive-based program, um, upload the CSV file that you would like to use with the first name, last name, and email address. Um, one big point I would like to call out is if you do have multiple products on uh, the Gartner Digital Markets sites, please do identify which product you would like us to do outreach for, um, just because each page has a different um, unique uh, URL submission form. And then you just click off here to make sure that you do have the right to uh, you know, give us the list to send out to people and hit submit. So this link here, the survey gizmo link, um, that'll be provided to you guys um, after, after this presentation. Will you be sending out this presentation afterwards? Yes, we will. So we will also be sending out the recording of this presentation um, in case you want to distribute it to any of your colleagues or anything like that. Uh, in addition to that, you will also have access to these slides and I'll be sure to put the notes <clears throat> from what I had said um, into the slides as well. So you'll have those to share um, with any team members that want to learn more. Do these suggestions apply to software device and GetApp as well? Uh, yes, I think that you know doing reviews to uh, the sites, um, you want to leverage all these best practices I said. I will say <clears throat> when it comes to your review recruitment, I would recommend leveraging Captera as your main go-to point for these types of campaigns just because the back end um, for reviewing the, uh, reviewing the reviews, um, for lack of better words, uh, is pretty easy through the vendor portal. Um, so just taking advantage of that and, you know, leveraging the service, the reviews acquisition service will get the reviews to your Captera portal uh, profile, I should say, rather. And once these uh, websites are integrated in Q4, uh, they will spread across the three sites. So that's why we're focusing here. Can reviews be confidential? We sign NDAs. Excellent question. So for the reviews that are posted, we do post first name last name and organization. The email address they provide is never posted or anything like that. Again, that's just used by our system to ping the email address to make sure that they do have access to that, um, to click the confirmation link. If there is an issue with company name, um, we could try to work around that. Uh, I would recommend just contacting our team and we can talk through uh, best ways to word that so your users feel more confident that they can uh, leave that review. Um, let's see, you did not mention reaching out verbally over the phone to request reviews. My boss wants us to do this, which is time consuming, because most emails get ignored. Is there any advice? So yeah, I mean, I think that reaching out over the phone uh, is a great way to start that, you know, by breaching the conversation over the phone. Um, it really obviously is going to get heard by your client or user. Uh, but then I would not shy away from emailing afterwards. Um, don't think that just because one email campaign didn't work, the rest are going to fail or not get great success rates. Um, as I had mentioned previously in the example from uh, OK Dork, um, just by changing your subject line, you can get 11% uh, more opens. So um, don't be afraid to leverage both in tandem. Um, I, I understand the phone calls are time consuming, um, so if you want to try doing an email campaign, maybe talk to your boss about the last one, try to identify if the subject line was the problem, what your open rate looked like, perhaps the call to action wasn't strong, um, if there wasn't an incentive of any type, whether that's a piece of content or a gift card or whatever that is, um, that also could help. But um, I think that if your boss is pushing for verbal outreach, uh, just getting people's uh, attention on the phone is a really good way to do that. You don't have to spend 30 minutes with each person and then just letting them know you'll send them the details in the email. So they'll have their eye out for that email as it comes through. Um, I hope that helps. Let's see. Is there any cost for the email campaigns? No, the reviews acquisition service is absolutely free. Um, so when it comes to both the incentives, which we're offering for a limited time, so we're recommending that you jump on this sooner rather than later, since we're not gonna be able to do that um, in perpetuity. Uh, but the campaign itself, this is gonna exist forever. So as I mentioned earlier, it's gonna be really important for you to have a steady stream of reviews in today's um, you know, software buyers mind. They want to see reviews that are about six months old or newer. So by leveraging this campaign, um, the reviews acquisition service moving forward, uh, it'll always be free. And so just by contacting different users every quarter, or every couple months, every month, whatever you want to do, um, we're here to help and it will never cost you anything. So 
So uh, someone just said, I do not see the reviews acquisition service under reviews tab in the Captera vendor portal. Uh, right now, this is not in the vendor portal. So um, going to the reviews tab, you will not see anything about the reviews acquisition service. We're working on getting that integrated. Um, but for the time being, just keep your eye out for a follow-up email after this presentation with a link to the survey gizmo page, um, which is where you will upload that CSV file of your users. Let's see. Um, what is the time frame for the Amazon gift card offer? When does it expire? Um, we don't have a, a specific time frame in mind. Um, it's going to be based on how many lists we get, um, you know, and we're expecting a lot after this presentation, not too surprisingly. Um, so I would recommend jumping on this sooner rather than later, um, but it's not going to be around forever. Uh, and when it comes to the gift cards themselves, just in case anyone asks you um, after you upload your list and this goes out, those will be sent over <clears throat> to the first 25 users who leave that review uh, approximately one week after the review is posted. Uh, when does Q4 start? That'll be in October. How do we get more than one product listed on your site? Um, you can just contact um, your account manager to uh, get that. Uh, if you do not have an account manager, you can contact Jason or I. We would be happy to help look into it um, and either help you with it if we can or connect you with the right person internally. Again, uh, my email is here and Jason's at the bottom. We have customers in different locations that understand basic English. Could we have a localized campaign um, if we do the translation for you? So by that, I'm assuming you mean, can you collect the reviews, translate them, and input them yourselves? Uh, unfortunately, no. Um, we do have a QA team that goes through the reviews to make sure that they are submitted by the users. Um, the review submission form is really not that long. The open text box is 100 characters at minimum, um, which is actually less than a tweet. So uh, we hope that the users will be able to um, submit that. If English isn't their first language and they're unable to do so, uh, we understand um, and that just is not going to be a fit for them. But um, yeah, yeah, I would just please do not <laughs> input reviews for your users. Our team will catch that and we'll have to remove them. Do we get a list of customers who have opened the email when it is sent? Um, so yeah, we will be able to report back to you, um, you know, what the open rates looked like, uh, who submitted the reviews um, and all that. So you'll get kind of a performance breakdown after the, uh, after the campaign goes out for the reviews acquisition service. If I send a list this week, when do the emails go out? So right now we're on a current lag time um, because we already have had uh, lists coming through since this has been live for the last week or two um, of about a week, week, week and a half. So if you get your lists in today, um, as you get that link, I, I think it might be able to go out maybe the beginning of not next week, but the week after. Um, really can't promise too much. I know our team is a little overwhelmed already based on the positive response we're seeing to this program. So um, I would just recommend getting that link in um, sooner rather than later. And when you do get that um, list submitted, our team will follow up and let you know what an estimated time looks like. Uh, what is a good way to respond to a positive review? Uh, I would just say thanking someone for their time. You know, these people are taking time out of their busy days when they're doing something to help you guys out to leave a review and just letting them know that you really do appreciate it. Um, don't be afraid to show the human side of your brand. Um, really do take the opportunity to win a customer for life in that interaction because you're going to get notified um, if you check that box in the response form. So just saying thank you, we appreciate it, um, and we're always looking to make the experience better. Um, something along those lines, obviously. Change it to whatever fits your, um, fits your needs. What is the privacy policy for the reviews acquisition service? Great question. So the list that you submit will never be used <clears throat> for anything other than this one campaign. So the reviews that are submitted um, through this will, you know, be subject to our terms and policies and all that. Just to you can read those through your account manager, or Jason, and I can send those to you. Um, but the actual list you provide that is um, going to be used for that one campaign. And if you want to work together in the future on another campaign, we would be happy to do so. Typically, we just have a single contact user at a software customer. Um, how do we get to the other users? Uh, if you don't have their contact info, I would ask the um, user at that company to uh, put together um, a list of the 
emails that they have. Uh, unfortunately, if you haven't interacted with uh, a customer within the past two years, we're not allowed to email them through our terms of service. So I will say that if you do get a list like that, um, introduce yourselves to that user. Um, you know, make sure that you bring them on to your, uh, if you have a marketing automation track or something like that, but don't just send them over to us as the first point of interaction or else they might be a little bit confused. Um, and all right, looks like we have time for one more question. Um, who will the email to our customers come from? It's going to come from a joint um, domain. So it'll be your company name at capterra.reviews.com. So it'll be a little bit co-branded. But all right, everyone, that's the time that we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I really do hope this helps. Uh, again, Jason and I are more than willing to help you out when it comes to getting reviews onto your page. Um, also contact your account management team, your client success team. Um, at Capterra to uh, help you out. And um, we look forward to seeing all those lists come through for the reviews acquisition service. Please do keep your eye out for that email since you registered for this webinar. It'll be sent over shortly from our team um, and upload those lists as it comes in. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day.